If you haven't watched the last lesson, which showed the basic game class hierarchy, which I've started writing in C Sharp, I suggest you watch that now. In this lesson, I just want to highlight the similarities and the differences between the classes I've written in C Sharp and the classes I've written in Java. I'm Hugh, and this is another lesson in my course on adventure game programming. As I've said before, C Sharp and Java are such similar languages that translating code from one to the other is often quite straightforward. As you can see, the broad structure of my code in Java is very similar to my code in C Sharp. So the C Sharp code, which you can see in the foreground here in Visual Studio, shows how I've created the map by adding rooms one at a time to this map array. The code in Java in NetBeans is broadly similar. Uh, the main difference is that in this case, I've used an array list instead of an array. Now my Java code here is not identical. It's not a slavish copy of the C-sharp code. And that's simply because there's more than one way that you could program this. And I just want to show you a quick overview of a couple of ways that I've done this. So let's go through the classes very, very quickly. So I, the game starts in this class, the adventure game class. The main function still contains the main loop in this code. You remember that I put it into constructor of game in my C sharp code. Doesn't really matter, it performs the same function. So here's my game class. As I say, it's got an array list of map. It's got an actor class, which defines the player. Here's the command list. This will look very familiar if you looked at my C sharp code. And then I've got the constructor. It adds the rooms to the map. The directions are handled in a slightly different way, which I'll explain shortly. And it puts the player, the actor object, in the uh, first room, room zero of the map. Now down here, here's some Java syntax getters and setters, which is different from C sharp syntax. Uh, the move to function is very, very similar. You can see that it moves north, south, east, or west by calling these functions here of a room. And in fact, I have another function here called move player to, which simply calls move to with player and a direction. Uh, so I'll quickly scroll through this. You can stop it to look at it if you need to. Update output that just displays messages de depending on whether there is no exit or you are in a new room when you try to move from one room to another. Process verb this has this long switch case block just to deal with the commands n s w e and to call the appropriate methods. Uh, this code also deals with verb noun. Uh, my C sharp code that I showed in the previous video only dealt with one word commands. This can take two word commands. And you can see that they're parsed out here. The run command function is what starts everything off. So it trims the input to lowercase. Then it converts this into a word list. You can see that's this uh, utility function up here. And then it calls pass command. So broadly speaking, it's sim similar to the C sharp code that I showed previously. Let's have a quick look at the actor class. Very, very similar to my C sharp actor class. It just has a location. It's a descendant of the thing class. Thing has a name and a description. So it calls the base class in Java. That's using this super rather than base as in C sharp. Apart from that, very, very similar to my C sharp version. Room again extends thing and again as in my C sharp code it adds on direction properties or direction variables with these pairs of getters and setters which are again as in C sharp ints. Thing well that's just as I said a very simple base class which has a name and a description. Now there's one other difference here in globals you see that I've got direction. So rather than use minus one to indicate no exit, I have this declared as no exit. So I can refer to it in my code. So I've got this, this enum with north, south, east, west, and then this no exit constant. So you can look back again at how I initialized my code. So you can see I've used these here in, uh, in the initialization of the rooms. Instead of putting minus one, I put direction dot no exit and down here you can see I've used 
those constants again. And here, when I want to update the output, move player to direction dot north. So I've again used that enum just for the purposes of code clarity. There are lots more lessons to come in this series. To be sure you don't miss any, hit the subscribe button and click the little bell icon.